All right, so now we want to start working with the text inside of the cells. And to do that, if we want to actually change some of these options, we have to understand what a run is. So I'll go ahead and uh, explain that in the code, and then I'll get to over here what it means. So I'll have a, let's get our table, and we'll get the first row. So we'll say rows one, and then we'll do cells. We'll get the first cell. And then we will do, uh, let's see, paragraphs. This will get the paragraphs inside the cell. Um, by default, every cell has a paragraph in it, whether, whether there's text in it or not. So this would appear with one paragraph in it. So then uh, once we have that, we're gonna loop through those paragraphs to get the runs. Well, actually, I'll just show you the one run at first. So I'll go, runs zero and we'll wrap this in a print statement so we'll run that sorry rows not row we run that and we get our uh, run object and then I can just copy and paste uh, control C oh, control C Control V and then we'll do dot text and that will get the text within our run. Now I want to loop through all the runs in my paragraph because I'm going to show you exactly what a run is. A run is nothing more than the change in formatting. So uh, this A and O have the same formatting of uh, the text right now but if I take this and I change that to a red O now they are two separate runs within the document. So I'll save this and I'll get a for loop going uh, for our paragraph here. We're going to grab that uh, and copy it. And then we're gonna say par equals that that we just put. We'll do um, for runs in par dot runs. And then we will print the runs.txt. All right, and I'm just gonna get rid of those two because we don't need them. And I'll run this. And you can see we get A and O. So this is the run and that's the run. So I'll just make that a little more clear. Uh, let me add a counter equals zero. This really isn't the best way to do it, but for right now, it doesn't really even matter. So then we'll do that, uh, add that in here, and then uh, right there. So now that we have that, I'll add a little more here. I'm just gonna go one, two, three, four, five. And I'll have uh, that red. And this one, we'll make that blue. And then these two at the end, will change the font. And then this five, we will change the size. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. And we should have a different run for each letter. So we'll run that now, and we do. One, two, three, four, and five. So any change of formatting is going to spark a new run. All right, so now we know what a run is, but we don't really know why it's important to us at this moment. So I'll go ahead and show you that now. Uh, we have access to different properties uh, from the runs. We can do runs.font dot size and we can set the font size so let's do 50 and we'll run that here and then we'll open it up our edited document and we can see that we changed the font size there we can also go uh, runs 
dot font dot name and we can change all of the fonts names. So let's uh, we'll go up here and we'll pick a font. Let's pick something really different. Uh, Gubby, let's do uh, Gubby. So we'll say G-U-B-B-I, I think that's how it was spelled. We do that uh, and then we'll run this and then um, I'll open it back up. There we go. We changed everything to Gubby. And we can also change the color here. We have to do it uh, a lot like the color in when you do the background cell. Uh, so we have to create a color object. I'll just go ahead and runs dot font dot color equals lavender. And I'm going to declare lavender up here. We're going to say lavender equals. And then we're going to have to import this, but it'll be RGB color. Uh, and I'm just uh, looking over here. OXFF, OX99, OXCC. So these are just RGB values. And then I left this import on there, but you might have to uh, write that in there. docx.shared import RGB color. So now if I run this, it should change all these to our nice lavender color. So I'll run that. Uh, dot color, can't set a tribute. Oh, I'm sorry. It is color.rgb because we've created an RGB color object. Sorry about that. So if I run that and then I close and open this back up, we can see that we have changed the color. So you have access to all these properties and there are also others to view that can be found on um, uh, the docs. So this is where you find uh, the run objects. You can go through here, add picture, add tab, add text. Uh, you can italicize things. So this is really where you can go to uh, find all your formatting needs. And I think you can just use this type of format to do it. All right, so with runs, we also have the functionality to add a picture. And we can do that by saying this. We will say runs. Uh, dot add picture and I have this uh, wonderful picture here so we shall commence the jiggling and we just need to take the file name and we'll plug that in there so uh, ctg dot jpg and then here we will specify the width and the height of the image. So I'm going to go um, uh, width and we're gonna do this in inches because that is uh, basically how we have to do it. So I'm just gonna make it one inch and then we need to import this from docx. So I can just click here and you can see that it was imported up there so that's pretty much it if I run this now. Oh, uh, I guess I named that wrong. CTJ. Sorry. All right, so we'll close it. We'll run it again. All right, everything checked out that time. We still have five runs. Uh, let me open it back up. Oh, let me close it. I'm going to open it back up. And uh, you can see that we have commenced the jiggling. Woo! So, yeah! That wow! is how you add a picture with runs. Uh, 